What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to go over how to use Gulp SAS to process our SAS files within our directory over here and output them to our style.css file. Now if you remember from the previous video we installed Gulp on our computer but now we're going to actually do something with it. This is going to be something useful. So Gulp SAS is good because what's going to happen is we have our CSS files, our SCSS files over here nicely organized within subfolders. Alright, so to get started, make sure you have your local server running, fire up your text editor, and I'm using Visual Studio Code, and make sure you have the command line down here. Or if you're going to use git bash or your terminal, have that open. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, in the command line, we're going to type out our first command, and I have my package.json file open because I want to show you where it's going to install SAS. So I'll go over here, type out npm, space, install space dash dash save dash dev and then gulp sass so when you type out dash dash save dash dev that's going to put everything inside your dev dependencies or it's going to put that module inside your dev dependencies as you see gulp sass popped up right there all right so that's good to go now what we're going to do is inside of our gulp file.js you remember we had our first one over here our first var gulp equals require gulp we're going to do the same thing i'm just going to copy this line go below and then for this one it'll say sass var sass and then require gulp sass all right so now we have our two variables we have the one for gulp first then we have the sass variable over here now we're going to create another task because as you remember we created this default task over here this didn't do anything it was just for demonstration purposes but now we're going to actually do something so what we're going to do here is we're going to type out gulp.task parentheses quotation marks we'll give the task a name of sass makes sense to use that and then we'll put a comma after the closing quotation mark right there and then we'll type out function open and closing parentheses outside that set of opening and closing parentheses we'll put our curly braces and give ourselves some space again. Outside of there, we put our semicolon. Make sure to actually type out gulp. So now we have our gulp.task sass function, and this is where we're gonna put our code. So as you remember, look up here, this is where we have our various commands that we're gonna be using. We have our task done. So now let's look at our gulp.source. I'm gonna tab in, just to give myself some space. Type out gulp.src, and then uh, parentheses, quotation marks and now this is going to be the location of your sas files that you're going to be focusing on so this is where the relative path is important to take note of i'm in the root directory everything's going to be relative to the gulp file and its location so here i'm going to want to jump into the devwp folder so i could just type out devwp forward slash then i'm going to want to jump into the sas folder then forward slash. Now, since I have a bunch of other folders here, I'm going to use a glob pattern, which is going to be uh, two asterisk signs, and then another forward slash asterisk dot scss. All right, so to explain what's happening here is the source of the files that I'm going to be focusing on are located within the devwp folder in the sas folder, but I also want to target every single subfolder and every file that has the extension of scss. So this will take care of that for me. And then I'll go over here and let me tab in one more time. Now I'm going to pipe sass. So I'm piping sass function dot on inside there, quotation marks, an error, comma. All right, so now we got that covered. So this is just for error handling over here. I'll go to the next line, and now I'm gonna pipe another command. So this is gonna be for the destination. So this is gonna be where you want the file to be sent to. So once it processes, once Gulp SAS processes every file within every folder in your SAS folder, where do you want the generated file to go to? So for me, that's gonna be in the devwp folder like that put a semicolon at the end and now let's look at what's happening here let me bring this uh, command line down a little bit so we have gulp sass installed you see it right here 
We have our variable over here for SAS. We're requiring gulp SAS. Make sure your syntax is correct. And then we move on to the next section of code over here. We're going to go to gulp task. So we're giving our task a name of SAS function and then we're going to the source so this points to the files or folders so the source is going to be inside of our wwp folder sas folder this is the glob pattern and everything that has a dot scss extension then we're going to pipe sas now piping what this means is we're going to be going our step by step so when you're using gulp you're going to be issuing your commands and then you're going to be going through your various modules and you're going to see a better demonstration of this as I start installing other modules and plugins because we're going to be using stuff for your browsers, for concatenating files, for cleaning up your CSS, for minifying, a bunch of these different plugins that we could use with Gulp. And we're going to go step by step with each and every single one of them. So that's what happens when you're piping through each, uh, each section of code. So now we have our destination done. Now we have to watch it. So we're going to go down here and we're going to say gulp.task sas colon watch comma function and we're going to gulp dot watch we're going to watch everything here and then let me close this off and close that off all right so now what we're doing here let me save that file we have our first module that's going to be used we have the gulp sas module so let's see this in action. So what I'm going to do over here is let me open up a browser window. All right, so this is the beginning of the starter theme. As you see, it's not styled out. I'm recoding it to implement Bootstrap 4 within the starter theme. So right now we have just the raw files itself. So what I'm going to do here is we see that we have um, a white background over here. So I'm going to go back over here to my code editor. I'm going to open up the elements folder right there elements.scss. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to comment out this block of code right there. This is CSS. Give it a background. Let's say black. I'm going to save that. Now nothing happens here yet because nothing's been processed. So what I'm going to do here is I'll bring this window down over here. Bring it to the side so we can see what's happening. I'm going to bring the code editor like this, try to give you a good visual representation. All right, so what I'm going to do here now is down here, I'm going to type out the command in the command line. Gulp SAS. And if we did everything right, it should process the SAS folder and all the files in it. And then we can refresh the browser over here and see the styles take place. So we see that it started and it finished. Go over here, refresh. We might have to clear the browser cache. And now you see that the background's black. Now, so what happened here? Well, with our gulp file over here, let me bring this over here. We have gulp sass. We're processing our sass folder and all the files in it. And we're outputting it to our style.css file, which is right here. So now what I'm going to do is let me bring this to a larger screen. I'm going to view, split the editor. So now you see you have the body over here, right? So we gave it the background style of black. Let me go back over here. I'm going to comment that out and I'm going to uncomment that section right there. Save it. Nothing happens automatically. What has to happen now is we'll go back down here. We'll reissue that gulp space sass command. Enter. And now you see it changed it in the style.css file. So that automated it. Now you might be saying to yourself, why not just do it directly here? And that's going to be fine for smaller projects. But as your files get larger, as your projects get larger, it's going to be better to have your code modular. We have everything compartmentalized in its proper order. And then you automate the process. And then everything gets compiled and generated for you. This is going to make you a more efficient coder. So now we change the color of the background of the body element. Go back here to the browser. Refresh. And now you see the background is back to um back to white. So now we have Gulp SAS installed. All right, hopefully you found this video helpful. This is going to be part of a larger playlist where I show you how to use Gulp to design websites, develop websites, and how to use it with WordPress. This is going to be part of a larger ongoing series of videos in terms of developing WordPress themes, customized themes for your website or for your clients' websites or for themes that you want to sell to the general public. This is going to be a starter theme that implements it with the underscore starter theme and the bootstrap front end framework. I'm going to show you the very basics to start off with. 
and we're going to progress to very advanced topics. If you want to get all the source files, I have it available on my website, pixelmob.com. I'll leave a link in the description section. But make sure you subscribe because I'm going to show you how to use other Gulp plugins like Clean CSS, uh, Browser Sync. I'm going to show you how to use uh, Gulp Concat, Uglify, and other plugins that are going to be very helpful within your development and design workflow. All right, so again, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification icon down below, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.